this is Gold Ninja Battle Morpher. Um, and as you probably know from the, if you saw the last video, this is the last American item. Because come next video, we'll be on the Japanese stuff. So uh, it's been a long time um, in development, but we have finally, finally reached that part of the schedule. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I was stuck with it. Anyway, this is Gold Ninja Battle Morpher. Oh, and yes, if you can hear a fan going in the background, it's because it, it, is, it is indeed the middle of summer in the UK, at least, because it's the 1st of August today, and it's um, very hot indeed, uh, especially um, in the UK houses, because they're designed to keep heat in, because the UK is known for having terrible weather. So that's backfired, hasn't it? Because it's now really hot inside. Anywho, Gold Ninja Battle Morpher. This item is a repaint and retool, if you can call it that, of the original Ninja Battle Morpher. In fact, wait a second while I get the original. Because it's in here somewhere. Should be easy. Should be really easy access, and I've got it. It's just under some other stuff. So here's the normal Ninja Battle Morpher. That's just fallen over. How can we uh, fix this? There we go. Here's normal Ninja Battle Morpher and the Gold Ninja Battle Morpher. So you can see they're basically the same thing. Um, yeah, I don't really like repainted morphers, especially in this case. I think for Battleizers it was okay because it was like supposed to be like an enhanced version of the Red Rangers morpher, uh, meaning that, or meaning that it was meant to be like a a boost of some kind. Disney used to take uh, the Six Rangers morphers and re re repaint them red, but um, that was for a Battleizer. That was like a power up. So I suppose that was. Um, Passable in, in a way because it was like an enhanced version of the first morpher or maybe except for the magnum morpher because that was just literally just a wee repaint with no additional bells and whistles on it Unlike some other ones so at least those were better than this because this appeared Because the gold ninja battle morpher appeared in I think episode 8 It's, it's absolutely it's absolutely this thing is a monstrosity and now the actual Morpher won't go down. Right, so this appeared in episode 8. So there wasn't even like a considerable episode gap in it. Which is, to be fair, that's how it should have happened. But they, what is really, really bonkers sounding to me, at least, is because when this Morpher came out, in Japan at least, this, this version did not exist. Instead, we had this thing called the Ninja Star Burger, which was a burger cell phone. Don't... Seriously, don't ask. I can't explain it. Now, the important thing about that is that the star, that the Ninja Star Burger, does appear in Power Rangers Ninja Steel, but it's only used as like a camera, which is stupid because they could have used that as a morpher. Anywho, um, the Star Burger in in Ninja Steel, I think it's called the Burger Phone or the Burger Camera or something like that. It's in the um. It is in Ninja Steel and Super Ninja Steel, but the only reason for that is that whenever the Gold Ranger or Star Ninja defeats a monster by himself, or I don't know, it's been a while since I've watched a Ninja, whenever he's seen defeating a monster, a monster of the week, he normally takes a photo, he normally takes a selfie with the monster at the end of the battle. Um, now, this was um, in Shuriken Sentai Nin Ninja, and it was part of the footage that America would have to take if they wanted to um, adapt all of Stone Ninja's footage successfully. So that's why the Burger Morpher appears in Power Rangers, but th that's why th this was invented. So maybe so, part of me thinks that maybe they thought a Burger Morpher wouldn't sell. I see. I don't know exactly how Ninja's toy sales did. It must have done well because that's where they got it in the first place. Um, it's also Ninja's. So maybe they thought the burger would take away from the ninjas. I mean, to be fair, I believe the ninja when it came out, the ninja would have some, did have some complaints because at the time you had main five rangers were ninjas, um, and the gold ranger was an American, and that really confused some people. And that and the ninja got quite a lot of uh, hate for that. But I mean, I watched it, I liked it. Um, 
but yeah, I can see where, pe where people were coming from with that. Um, so maybe that's why they uh, decided to uh, change it to a more like ninja looking morpher because this looks like a ninja star. Uh, maybe maybe they did that. Now decorations wise, this is like I said before, this is exactly the same as normal. Um, well, not exactly the same, but it's like ninety percent the same as the regular ninja battle morpher, except it's got uh, grey and gold on it, which are, which is all plastic color and not paint. Um, the grey, I think, is the standard plastic colouring. I'm not sure, though. Right, for cheapness, but I, I don't know. Um, and I did some of these weird things on the um, side here. Which I mean, that's fair. That's okay. But the thing that the Ninja Battle Morpher did, uh, and the Karakuri hanging, in fact, it actually hid these parts, like in these little slots that would be... Um, Within these little design sections, but then, but then again, this doesn't do that, meaning that you've just got some things that stick out. It, it looks a bit of a nice sword to me. Um, now, this one on the side, this one does nothing. These two uh, do that, but we'll get to that in a minute. This one does absolutely nothing. Um, there are more stickers on this item. The original Ninja Battle Mover had four stickers, one for each blade of the shuriken. This one misses out. A blade and just replace it with molded uh, with molded ninja logo or ninja steel logo and on these two things it adds more stickers so somehow it adds up something to having more stickers despite missing one off all right that's fine okay um the, the middle here indeed has a pin system as you can tell from the four pins. This does mean that all of the Ninja Power Stars are indeed compatible, and it can indeed read them with the rail system on the back of each one. So, I mean, they added that. They didn't have to add that, because I remember a lot of the previous uh, six range of morphers, like the Terra Morpher and the Silver Morpher from Super Mega Force and the Robo Morpher from Mega Force, even going as going all the way back to Samurai, even with the Samurai, with the, with the Samurai Morpher, they didn't have any, like, special capabilities. But what what probably made them include the rail system here is probably because they saw how well the Dino, um, the T-Rex Supercharged Morpher did before, because that had a reader in it, so maybe they thought that if they, if they were to release more um, items of, like, multiple unlockable sounds, maybe they thought that would sell some more. Because that meant that also that meant they could put they could drive the price up of a six range morpher from something like before it would have been like fifteen pound. They drove the price with this to thirty pounds, so that's probably why they did it to make more uh, morphers that could do more things and have more electronics in them. So that's fair. Um, I do like how they've added the rails, but um, rail system, but yeah, this has got some flaws of some of the sounds it makes. We'll get to that later though. On the back, there's a different uh, back part too. Instead of having like a handle with a button on it, a logical small handle with a button on it. This one's got like a, a blaster handle with a trigger, which is okay, that's fair, because it is meant to be like a gun weapon, because to be fair, they were kind of lacking in gun weapons for uh, Power Rangers Ninja Steel, as well as uh, the original Ninja, so I can see why they maybe wanted to add an extra gun weapon in to, to the mix. Um, surprisingly enough, the assembly for this is actually pretty simple. This just comes off, and you've got a little knob here that is spring-loaded, and if you look here, there's a little catch mechanism, and this little handle here, when you, when you push the trigger, there's a little moving nodule at the end, and that is what pushes this button down here. In fact, if I turn it on real quick... I have got a Lego missile piece here. If I push down here with the, with the button, oh, that's the try me mode. Sorry about that. It will still work. All right, so that's what that does. Um, again, to attach the handle, it's pretty simple. Just set it in there, give this a quick turn, and it just falls into place. Now the other thing this can do, 
uh, without turning on the sounds, but at least. If you push, like the original Ninja Burst Morpher, one of these things here is a button, and if you push it, these two pieces will fly up, and they will form like a gun, a blaster. This one is spring-loaded, this one right here, but this one can be moved on its own. This forms like a little gun. The design of the gun isn't exactly great, because... The, the back of it just looks way too big. It just looks way too big, way too cum cumbersome. This doesn't look... It just looks really big for a, for a gun. It just looks... Some part of it just looks unnatural. Anyway, we will now have a look at the sounds this makes. And as you have discovered before from my uh, mistake, you, can, you know that there's a try me function. Just like the original Ninja Battle Morpher. Now, if I remember correctly, in this mode, the trigger does nothing. Setting a power star, or just pushing down the uh, little pins on their own, will do this. Which is a sound that... I don't know what style that makes sound to, because, that, I mean, that's another issue. Um, the sounds that are triggered by stars aren't exactly uh, unique, aside from a few of them, because they literally just take um, like any random sound effects they can. That's all. That's all chiming mode does. Turning it on and pushing the trigger will give you these sounds for the gun. So that's all that does. Um, now for the individual power star sounds. We're going to start with the main six ranges. This is the Red Ninja Power Star. And again, setting it will give you... Setting any Power Star will give you this sound. Then removing it will give you that. And if you set it and push the trigger... We'll give you that finishing noise that the that the original Ninja Battle Morpher already had. So this already uses reuses quite a lot of sounds already. But again, what else were they were, were they supposed to do? Anyway, the spinning sound is the same. So it doesn't I don't, doesn't say what star it is. It just says the word activate in this case, and it has a sound effect. Um, the sound effect you just heard was not lifted from any ninja toys. This is just like a generic like laser robot sound. Again, pushing the trigger will do nothing except make it the final finishing attack noise. So I'm not going to show that off anymore. Oh. There, didn't register the fact I would remove the flipping sing, the flipping star. Right, and now we have the blue Ninja Power Star. The blue. Activate. Activate, and again, like another generic, generic noise. Like another generic laser noise. Then we have the yellow Ninja Power Star. Activate another generic, another generic noise. Um, then we have the uh, the white ninja power star, which is the one that's really hard to spin. Activate, Activate again another like generic no laser noise. Then we have the pink power star. Activate, Activate. yeah another generic. Generic laser noise. Then we have the the gold ninja power star here. Activate. 
So the default noise for trimming mode was this sound, I think. Activate another generic laser noise. That's not a surprise there. And now we're going to do the attack stars. Starting with the element star in fire mode. So the engage plus a fire noise. Now, the difference between the regular ranger stars you just heard and all on these and most of the remaining ones is that um these sound effects were indeed lifted from the ninja toys so the fire sound effect for this star here was lifted from the goton ninshuriken in fire mode then we have the element star in water mode I like a water sound effect. Again, this was lifted from the Goton Ninchuriken in water mode. And then we have the Storm Star, Storm Star Hurricane mode star, which is the because this item originally came with these two stars here. So the Storm Star Hurricane mode does this. I believe that's lifted from the Furai Ninshuriken in, I think it's wind magic mode. It says Kaze magic, I think Kaze means wind. Again, some of these stars can be a pain to remove. Then we have the Storm Star in lightning mode. Some of the effects probably lifted from the Furai Ninshuriken in lightning mode, or I think it's Kaminari magic. Which means uh, lightning magic or thunder magic, I think. And then we have the Zord stars, I think. We have the Kodiak Zord. No, that's a lie. Sorry. The Dragon Zord star comes first. The Dragon Zord. Summon. That's a dragon sound effect. Now, the, th the funny thing about this is that I have. The star from the ninja word that sound effect was lifted from. Just let me get it quickly. It's in here. Now again, you'll be seeing this on a future video. Let's just uh, get it out and... Uh... It's exactly the same sound. Also, this means the Zord Star um, Shuriken sounds were lifted from the regular Rangers Shuriken. So, in this case, the, the this star sound was lifted from the Owl Ninja Shuriken. Oh, the blue Ninja Shuriken, at least. Then we have the Kodiak Zord Star. Which is like a like, like a howling noise. This was lifted from the Shuro Ninja Shuriken, or the White Ninja Shuriken. And then we have the uh, Ninja Fusion Sword, um, or the Ninja. Ult it calls it the Ninja Fusion Sword, although this is the Ninja Ultra Sword's colours. It's meant to be gold and not red. Um, for this one, I don't know. I honestly, I honestly do not know. I do not know where that sound effect was originated from. It might be American made, it might be Japanese original, it might, I don't know. Then we have the Blaze Star. Fire noise. Considering that there's a Japanese equivalent of this star called the Gekiatsu Ninshuriken, I think this was lifted from that sound. This was lifted from that star, Shuriken. Sorry. Then we have the... Now we just have some American-only stars, so these will all have American-made sound effects. First one is this, Ninja Master Mode Shuriken. That is the same chainsaw sound that the Ninja Master Blade makes. So that's American only because that's an American only weapon. 
Then we have the Lionfire Red Red Star. Like a lion roaring noise. Then we have the legendary red star. Now all of these will make the exact same noise. A robot noise. This makes no sense. It's not a Zold star, it's a ranger star. Identity crisis. Then we have the a team star. Again, any team star will play a noise. This the same noise as the Zeo's star. Like a team attack noise. So that is all of the sounds that this makes of my star collection. Again, it's got its faults, it's got its errors, but I think they tried their hardest ultimately. This light needs some charge. Um, it's got some flaws, but they still did their they still they still did their part to include another item that has a reader in it. And again, because we're starting the uh, the uh, Japanese reviews, I must stress again how big, the how small the American stars are. How small the American stars are compared to the um, original Japanese Nin Shuriken. Again, these will be this will be coming soon on a review video in the future. So if you want to see that, make sure to stay tuned, Ned. Uh...